Hello and welcome to MIT TV. And with me is Bob Cook for his regular review of psychotherapy books. And we've got an interesting book here, Tales of Unknowing, Existential Perspectives by Enisto Spinelli. Correct. Existentially. So what's this book about, Bob? I think this is our 73rd book, I just wanted to tell you. It's our 73rd book review, I think. Yes. And uh, over 50 of them come from the world of transaction analysis. Yes. However, this is a departure. Um, so I'm 68. So something like 36 years ago, I, I just started psychotherapy training. And I went to see this young, energetic teacher of psychotherapy, existential psychotherapy. Um, so a long time ago, and I met Ernesto Spinelli. Wow. And uh, it was the beginning of his journey in some way. He went on to become a famous existential teacher, started up his own school, and could be argued that maybe one of our finest British existential psychotherapists. So when we talk about existential psychotherapists like Yalom, people like that in the States, I think when we talk about UK existential psychotherapists, uh, along with uh, people that woman who lives in uh, Sheffield, I can't remember her name now. But, um, Von Drusen, is it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, he would sort of dip off the tongue as a person. And in 1997, he wrote a fascinating book, uh, which is this one, Tales of the Un-Knowing, which we'll get to in a moment, uh -huh. what that means. Yes. Um, and a bit like a Yalom book in some way, he took eight of his uh, tales of his psychotherapeutic encounters and through these tales he wanted to demonstrate number one some of the basic existential issues or themes that we face in life and also to use them to teach some of the methodology of existential psychotherapy um, I think the book is fascinating not only for its sort of wonderful uh, therapeutic tales if you like which I can resonate with as a psychotherapist but also a sort of glimpse into the whole world of existential psychotherapy. Mm. You how, and I, go on. How, how, does, how does existential psychotherapy differ, say, from the, the TA world or the humanistic world, Bob? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's a good question. Now, if you're going to study to be an existential psychotherapist, you, you are usually really have a passion for, for philosophy. Mm. So existential psychotherapy and philosophy go together. So we go back to people like Martin Hardiger. Mm. Is it Martin Hardiger? Is that his first name? Hardiger and then Herschel and Sartre, Camus, all these early philosophers, which actually were, as you, and I know you know a lot about this, were the originator of a lot of the um, thinkings of our early existential psychotherapy so, so number one is that you would have that you would have a passion if you like to philosophy and the really existence issues that are, are, are of the client that would walk, walk in the room so so for example transaction analysis which is a lot more direct if you like especially the early transaction analysts in the early 1960s eric Byrne, were it, and maybe this is a bit unfair, you would say, but I'm going to say anyway, we're, we're really quite interested in symptom removal. Mm. In other words, find out what the symptom, you know, removing the symptom rather than what, you know, staying in the adult ego state, you know, rather than what I think, and many of the existential psychotherapists would think, let's look at what's underneath the symptoms mm. and the lived in world of the client that comes to the door yes i mean you said many times that early ta was in fact um a cb almost a cbt yeah. approach yeah. and you mentioned some philosophers you know husserl heidinger um mm. you know of course with the german phenomenologists mm. and phenomenology is the philosophy of lived experience that's right sometimes referred to as back to the things themselves is uh, in philosophy yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he talks about people like Sartre, sure. Camus, um, 
who, um, you know, Sartre was an existentialist, of course. Albert Camus was, um, he, he, kind of, he kind of pioneered nihilism to some extent and, um, and this idea of life being a bit of a kind of weird thing, really. Um, you know, the idea that, that, that we're here, but, you know, there's no reason for us to exist. We're just here, you know. That's right. You're absolutely right. And uh, an existentialist would really look at um, the phenomenology of the client. In other words, how the client lives their life, mm. just the way you've just said it. We are going to look at um, joining the client in a therapeutic journey, but most of all, how they live their life. It's, you know, get in touch with the lived-in experience, if you like, the phenomenological experience of the person in front of us, rather than an obsession or focus on uh, symptom, remo symptom removal, if you like, or what Byrne called, you know, in some of his books, you know, um, the same process really, but uh, uh, symptom cure, I think he talked about, that's why. Mm. So this existential psychotherapy is looking at, ex ex you know, our really deep core issues around existence, like hopelessness, helplessness, anxiety, death anxiety, uh, not so much these behavioural aspects yeah. that the early TA therapists thought about. Yeah, absurdism is what I was struggling with. with Cam. Yes. That's life, right. Absurd. Yeah, the life's just absurd. It's just a, a ridiculous endeavour that we, you know, we we just here by accident. And that, uh, yeah. So really working with with the lived. Yes. The lived, very very much. The lived yeah. experience of the clients. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So one of the methods, if you like, or concepts that you know Ernesto talks about is this idea of unhyphen knowing unknowing in other words as you join the client in their therapeutic journey you need to be open and curious to whatever the session goes to so you have a concept really of unknowing mm. yeah, with, between the two of you so you could go anywhere it isn't isn't about making the session predictable or having treatment plans or having diagnosis yes unknowing <laughs> This all sounds very familiar to those of us in the humanistic world, Bob. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's why I chose to talk about the difference between TA and uh, <laughs> the existential world, because a lot of the humanistic philosophy, of course, in, in, this is your world, you know, in terms of the client-centered world, is a lot about, isn't it, staying behind the client and exploring their journey. But I think there's a step forward that uh, Ernesto would talk about is that you enter the space, you're far more proactive. You have a sense of curiosity and a sense of phenomenological inquiry and helping them to really, not, I suppose, in the end, reframe their lived in existence, if you like, yes. towards health and aspiration. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I've always thought that, you know, when, we, when you were talking about the differences, what flashed into my mind was. It's a bit like being on a bus, isn't it? The TA bus is one with a conductor on who tells yeah. you all the stops. Yeah. Where the existential slash humanist bus is a bit of a mystery tour. You get on the bus. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. yeah. So you've got a journey of unknowing. Unknowing, yeah. Yeah. And I like that concept, unknowing, because if you're in the world of unknowing or on the bus, mm -hmm. which is unknowing, if you like, that unknowing journey, you have to clear your, and it takes a long time, but you have to clear your, the therapist needs to clear their psychological structure of assumptions. Yes. Because once you enter the world of assumptions, you're moving away from that concept of unknowing. Yes, it's almost a difference, isn't it, between, between a philosophical model and almost a medical model. In yeah. The, in the, you're, you're, you're not sitting there second-guessing the client. What you're doing is you're just working with the material, you know, mm. Whereas, mm. you know, and I guess that that's such a big crossover in, in the humanistic existential and CA world. I'm sure that, you know, there's a huge amount of common ground, I think on the edges, mm. you know, there may be diagnosis and treatment plans, but I think, mm. I think we all kind of exist in that kind of shared space. That's my view anyway. No, no, that, that's absolutely right. So if we look at Ernesto's eight therapeutic tales, um, 
let's start with the first one, which is uh, one particularly pertinent to myself and perhaps people going to their 60s and 70s, you know, and it's called, the actual title is Growing Old Disgracefully, you know, in a growing old and in a <laughs> that sort of disgraceful way. But the whole uh, story, if you like, is about a 52-year-old uh, man that walks into Ernesto's room and talks about the fact he's paralyzed by anxiety and he has panic attacks and he can't sleep very well. And uh, Ernesto starts to enter his world and as I've just talked in a phenomenological way, uh, this journey of lived in experience of this man. Uh, and it turns out that um, he is obsessed with youth and fitness and uh, he has an anxiety about letting go of his youth. So what he's doing instead in terms of compensation yes. is, um, you know, uh, getting to very, very fit, going to the gym four times a day, seven times a week, uh, making sure he has sex at least four times a week with his wife. Um, and uh, he plays with his, his seven or eight year old um, boys who've got in the football team. He joins into the football team and he's keeping himself in this sort of youthful position or childlike position because he finds it so hard to let go of his younger self and the whole tale is about how he compensates about that and how Ernesto takes him into this journey of phenomenological curiosity if you like and through metaphor interestingly enough he he, 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 he allows the person to reframe this in a different way so it's a very interesting tale and really does show the hallmarks of this lived in world relationship that Ernesto goes into with his client. Yeah. He's, he's, he's interested in the, the, the phenomenal field as Roger mm. talks about and of course Rogers, Carl Rogers got his, a lot of his ideas from, um, from a, a, a philosopher um, from, from philosophy itself you know mm. uh, so yeah that's 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 really that's really interesting so yeah it's it's a book if you're interested in in the more existential uh, yeah life. yeah yeah that's right and just two three four more stories because he picks these tales to hallmark some of the existential issues mm. so he talks about the counter transference experience where he turned into if you like the client he turned into from the therapist into his own client yes in other words, through the counter transference he became so evoked in the material he actually became the client so that's an interesting story another one is how he works existentially with couples which i think is really interesting because there's not many books written around how you work existentially with couples and his last chapter and so go the whole book is a fascinating tale about how he uh, was working with somebody who was terminally ill in their last hours of life. And I think that's a really wonderful, wonderful story of compassion as he goes through that journey and real curiosity in meeting that person in the existential position um, or their lived in position. Yes. So it's a wonderful book to read. Yeah. Well, this sounds like a really essential book so, you know, if you're, if you may be doing a more clinical kind of course that has mm. lots of techniques, maybe, maybe one just to take the foot off the gas and just think about the, the other side of it, the more philosophical side. Tales of Unknowing, Ernest, Ernesto Spinelli, 1997. We'll put a link in the, in the bar below. And if you want to inspect the book, just click on it. Bob doesn't get paid for book reviews. He does it for the love of it. And if you click on it, um, you can have a look at it and, uh, Joining the existential angst, <laughs> the existential angst of the, of, of the clients, the and world of unknowing, the world of unknowing. Yes. So uh, until next book review, Bob Cook. Thank you very much. <laughs>